first year players, good impressions, earning recognition for being one of the most promising rising stars in the league, unexpected rookie of the year winners. Given the hot starts, if you can't keep up with the production, opponents quickly expose a certain player's flaws, the one-trick ponies will end up being in a lot of trouble. Several disappointing Rookie of the Year winners in the past ended up being labeled as huge busts, but at least they spent more than 5 seasons in the NBA before everybody seen enough. Many of these players already had their second and third chances, leaving a basketball legacy with massive regrets and unfulfilled potential. How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. This video will take a look at every player in NBA history to have made first team all rookie only to find themselves out the league 5 years after their first season, some of them out the NBA in 2-3 years. What happened to these promising rising stars? Starting with Art Heyman, the first overall pick in the 63 draft by the Knicks, only 310 games with the NBA and ABA, remembered as one of the greatest players for Duke, averaged 25 and 11 in college, viewed upon the Knicks franchise player, averaged 15.4 points in 75 games as a 6'5 shooting guard, but had a bad temper, drastically leading to a massive fall off his second season, averaged nearly 10 less points, 18 fewer minutes, known for seeming to look for trouble on the court, lashing with coaches, players, and even his alma mater didn't want to retire his jersey number till 1990. There's even existing footage of him fighting Larry Brown in college, leading to one of the greatest college hoops rivalries between Duke and Carolina. After new head coach Harry Gallatin took over in our second season, former Former reporter George Vesey wrote, Artie didn't allow Harry to play poker. Straight up says, if you won't let me into your game coach, I won't let you into mine. Traded to Cincinnati, then Philadelphia, before joining the CBA, also played in the ABA. Posting very good numbers, even winning the 68 title with the Minnesota Pipers, alongside superstar teammate Connie Hawkins, finished his pro career in 1970. Fred Hetzel of the San Francisco Warriors, former number one pick 65 draft, 6'8 small forward put up 7 and 5, first year post Will Chamberlain. I guarantee none of you in this video knew Steph Curry wasn't the first Davidson player to play for the Warriors. Hetzel became the first of five players from the program to play in the NBA, known as a solid six man, made the finals his second season under coach Bill Sharman, playing alongside Rick Barry and Nate Thurman, peaked by year three, averaged 19 and 7, chosen by the Milwaukee Bucks in the expansion draft, traded to Cincy, claimed yet again by another new team Portland Trailblazers from Philly, then waived by the Lakers after the 71 season, went into real estate as a broker, had some injuries that impacted his career, had so looked at his time in the NBA as a positive experience. Al Tucker out of Oklahoma Baptist, 6 pick 67 draft, peak year 1, averaged above 13 and 7, father played for the Harlem Globe Triangle in 1940, 4 total NBA seasons before playing briefly in the ABA, best remembered for being the Sonics first ever NBA draft pick, blessed with the talent but not a lot of motivation according to a former Sonic scout, passed away 2001 at 58, a 10 and 5 career stat line. Gary Greger, Bill Hewick and Art Harris all from the 68 class. Gregor picked 8 by the Suns in 68, played 4 seasons and changed before finishing out with the ABA, averaged 11-9 as a rookie but never took his game to another level, played for Atlanta, 2 seasons with Portland, 9 games with the Bucks, most remembered being the first ever draft pick by the Suns. Hewick on the other hand averaged 6-6, 6, 4 different teams after a season in LA, traded for Happy Harrison. NBA players retiring early back then, way more common than now. Harris, second round pick by the Sonics, posted over a dozen points, just four seasons, weighed by the Suns in 72, he was 25, passed away in 2007 at 60. The two other rookie first teamers in this class, both Hall of Fame superstars and champion teammates, Wes Unsell and Elvin Hayes. Dick Garrett of the 69 draft, 5 total seasons, solid rookie numbers with the 1970 Lakers, 11.6 points, 6-3-2 guard, similar production in the playoff run, also played for Buffalo, the Knicks and Bucks, his last season losing in the finals with Kareem, most notable for falling in game 7 of the championship twice with megastar teammates Wilt and Jabbar. Garrett unfortunately squeezed out the NBA at age 27 due to limited jobs, having just 17 teams, 12 roster spots, Garrett accepted his fate 
worked in sales, also most notable after retirement as a security guard spending decades with the Milwaukee Bucks. Mike Davis, 6'3'2 guard, averaged a dozen points first season with the Bullets, played four years, traded to Buffalo after his rookie season. Jeff Petrie, easily the best player on this list, monster rookie numbers of nearly 25 points, 6'4 shooting guard out of Princeton, only lasted five more seasons after his first. The two-time All-Star then averaged over 21 points after 1971, shared the Rookie of the Year award with Dave Cowens, one of the best players all time to never make the postseason, suffered a bad knee injury that ended his career at age 27, lost a lot of quickness, went from a near 25 point score to under 19. The first player to ever wear Nike sneakers, Petrie even scored 51 points in the game two times. The Blazers then won his first title after he was no longer of the team. After his playing days, became a phenomenal executive responsible for assembling the early 2000s Sacramento Kings teams. Dwight Davis, third pick of the 72 draft by the Cavs, a 9-7 guy, peak year 2, 6-8 power forward, spent his final two seasons with Golden State, unfortunately suffered a career-ending injury, tearing his quadricep February 20th, 1977, he was only 27. Freddie Boyd, fifth pick in the 72 class, averaged 10 and a half points his only double digit season. For the historically bad 9 and 73 Sixers, never made the playoffs, 327 total games last season in 1978, out the league at age 27 after suffering an ACL injury on his right knee, tried playing through the pain the final three years of his career, passed away 2023. Ernie D. Gregorio, known for having one of the most incredible passes in basketball history, the 6 foot point guard out of Providence, won the 74 Rookie of the Year, also the assist leader, put up 15 and 8 off the bat. Many raved about him as the next Pistol Pete, still holds the rookie record for most assists in a single game with 25, but a severe knee injury damaged his career. Having one of the most forgotten amazing rookie seasons, led Buffalo to the playoffs, but October 29th, 1974, suffered a tour cartilage on his knee, never the same after the injury, his minutes and numbers reduced, fell to the bench, traded to the Lakers in 77, waived, signed by the Celtics, finished out the 78 season, age 27, never played in the NBA again, the quick Gloria, who could have been the first John Stockton, if healthy, at least could have made multiple all-star teams and possibly become a Hall of Famer. John Shoemate, Pay 4th in the 74 draft, the 6'9 power forward didn't play his first true rookie season with blood clocks, got many physical evaluations before giving permission May 9, 1975 to start playing basketball again, averaged nearly 12-8 and eight as a rookie, started with Phoenix, traded to Buffalo, 318 total games played, rejected by the Sonics team physician after being traded from the Spurs. Ron Lee, 10 pick by the Suns in 76. Put up 10 a game, 2 steals, led the league in snatches his second season, nicknamed the Tasmanian Devil, had an aggressive physical style of play, 225 steals in year 2, still a Suns franchise record to this day, but traded to the New Orleans Jazz for Truck Robinson, Lee's career went downhill with a combination of injuries and a bad fit given his relentless style of play, had a difficult time adapting to a new team, his last season with the 82 Pistons, cut by the franchise, no team caught with the right offer, Lee took his talents to Italy, played three more seasons, most remember for being a defense first all out energy guy, even drafted by the NFL in the 12th round despite not playing football in high school or college. Calvin Ramsey, picked 4th in the 1980 draft, 6-1 point guard, finished 2nd in rookie of the year, one vote behind Daryl Griffith. Averaged 15 and 7 dimes under Jack Ramsey's Blazers, but his numbers declined, lasted 5 seasons after a sensational first year. Out the league at age 27, became a preacher, came back playing pro ball in 89 for the CBA, shipped it to Dallas after 2 seasons for Wayne Cooper, the worst thing to happen for his career, never feeling comfortable with the Mavs, traded to the Nets, got lost in the rotation, that included Michael Ray Richardson, Otis Birdsong, and Darwin Cook lost his love for the game completely, leading to a quick retirement. 
Clark Kellogg, most notable as a college basketball analyst for CBS Sports, a pick of the 82 draft, 6'7 power forward, averaged over 20 and 10 for the Pacers, finished second for Rookie of the Year behind Terry Cummings and ahead of James Worthy. Supposed to be the next breakout NBA star, having a Converse shoe deal, but first injured his left knee towards the end of his second season, re-injured that same knee during the 86th year, ruining his career, played a combined 23 games his last two seasons, becoming one of the most forgotten what-if players, forced to retire at age 25 after three knee surgeries, Kellogg could have become Elton Brand caliber. Steve Stepanovich, the second pick of the 83 draft, 6'11 center out of Missouri, put up 12 and 7 for Indy, amongst one of the best high school centers ranked by SI in 1979, alongside Ralph Sampson and Sam Bowie, a strong rotational player who started 90% of games, only missed seven total games his five seasons in the NBA, a career 13 and 8 guy, unfortunately had a degenerative knee condition that didn't improve after surgery in 88, not only missing the entire 89th season, but that knee injury forced him to retire early at just age 28 due to a dead spot in the bones of his left knee. Stepanovich said the injury was so bad he couldn't even cut the grass. Went on to undergo 13 surgeries, including 6 on his left knee and 4 shoulder operations since retirement. Roy Tarpley, the seventh pick of the 86 draft, spent six seasons with the Mavs, averaged over 7-7 seven seven as a rookie, won sixth man of the year his second season. Being a 6'11 power forward slash center, could have been a multiple time all-star, but the off-court troubles and drug addiction destroyed the chances of a potential Hall of Fame career. Arrested for DUI several times, banned from the league violating the drug use policies despite showing tons of promise, doing drugs and drinking heavily ruined his career, had the ability to space the floor, handle the rock and make passes better than most traditional bigs, also toured his ACL before being suspended for the third time, reinstated in 94, but the substance abuse already took a toll on his body, still averaged 13 and 8, age 30, his final season, Banned again from the league after violating the terms of reinstatement, a sad downfall, Tarpley passed away age 50 from liver failure, had Anthony Davis-like skills before AD, could have dominated with ease when focused, played overseas till his early 40s. Jorge Garbajosa, undrafted out of Madrid, Spain, the least familiar first teamer in the 21st century, 74 total games played for two seasons, averaged 8.5 points, 5 rebounds for the 07 Raptors, shared the floor with Chris Bosch. The Spaniard unfortunately had surgery on his leg and ankle, suffered one of the nastiest injuries ever seen in the NBA. Toronto later brought him out, returned to Europe, played pro for four more years, forever known as having the nickname The Garbage Man. Garbajosa led Spain to his first ever world title in 2006 as a starter that included the Gasol brothers, would have easily been way more remembered amongst the American fan base if it wasn't for that devastating injury. Al Dorton of the Los Angeles Clippers, pick 14 in 2007, nearly averaged 13 a game as a rookie, 6'8 power forward, put up good numbers but not a needle mover. 17 and 5 year 2, only other second year player that was playing better at the time, Kevin Durant, traded to the Wizards, then waved quickly. His last season being 2011 with Golden State, lasted just 4 seasons, a good athlete but was already a 24 year old rookie when drafted, had a poor jump shot, bad awareness on both sides of the ball, went overseas, basically traveled around the world, still playing ball to this day at age 40. NBA teams quickly figured out he was an empty stats guy on a bad team, didn't fully develop outside of having good athleticism, with no defined position, absolutely no second chances from the NBA after his rookie contract. Landry Fields of the New York Knicks, a fan favorite, athletic 6'7 small forward out of Stanford, considered a second round steal in the 2010 draft, started for the promising 2011 Knicks as a rookie, averaged nearly 10 a game, 6.5 boards, being a multi-dimensional role player, drew Anthony Mason vibes with his energy as a glute guy, won rookie of the month honors in November and December, signed with the Raptors as a restricted free agent after two seasons with New York, but suffered a career defining nerve injury on his shooting elbow, never the same since, totally lost his jump shot, had to learn how to shoot with his non-dominant hand, despite having multiple surgeries, 
The nerve on his arm couldn't be fixed, forcing him out the league at age 26, ending his basketball career in 2015, now age 35, the GM of the Atlanta Hawks. Nikola Mirotic, a sharp shooting stretch four, had his moments as a good role player, rookie of the year runner-up 2015, average 10 and 5 as a sixth man, could still be in the NBA today, absolutely dominating EuroLeague, winning 2022 MVP, being on a dysfunctional Bulls team, Mirotic was of the rare more than qualified NBA players to choose to leave the league, surprising everybody going back to Europe proved himself as a solid playoff performer, averaged 15 points through 9 games with the 2018 Pelicans, but his legacy in the NBA sadly remembered for getting punched by Bobby Portis. Now age 33, Miritic most likely will never come back to the NBA. Jaleel Okafor played exactly 5 seasons after his rookie year, fresh off being a number 1 high school prospect and winning the national title at Duke, put up 17-7 for the 10-win Sixers, but his biggest issue being way too one-dimensional, traditional big men with elite post moves but literally nothing else to show for, despite the process Sixers already having Joel Embiid and Nerlens Noel. Okafor simply became useless overnight after MB got healthy, buried to the bench, lost all his confidence, the worst possible place he could have been drafted. Also couldn't have come to the league at a worse time with the NBA transitioning to small ball, being a bad rebounder for his size, lacked effort, shown no hustle, basically Ennis Kanter on defense, not nimble to switch on D, offers zero rim protection, Jaleel also suffered a meniscus tear on his knee, also lost all confidence in his game while traded to the Nets, used him as a salary dump, became a tank commander for New Orleans, eventually landing Zion. Jaleel couldn't even rejuvenate his career with the 2021 Pistons, playing in China as of 2024, 247 career NBA games will be remembered as one well of the biggest busts of the 2010s decade. Four draft classes later, I made a recent video on the tragic downfall of the 2020 All-Rookie team, two of the former first teamers out the league today. After a fast start, Kendrick Nunn, rookie runner-up, starting point guard for the Miami Heat team that went to the finals. Before regressing, having a bone bruise with the Lakers ruined his quickness, was already a 24-year-old rookie with Miami, barely playing with the struggling Wizards last season, now balling out in Greece, Nunn to the Lakers was supposed to be what Austin Reed is doing today. While Eric Pascal on the other hand was a 23 year old rookie very similar to Al Dorton, empty stats on a bad team, averaged 14 points before struggling year 2 out the league after 3 seasons, 158 NBA games, even cut overseas, had no real position at 6'7", too small to play the 5, too slow to play power forward couldn't shoot or space the floor, not effective without the ball, realistically, Pascal's just not NBA material in today's game. Other former all-rookie first teamers, Willie Hernan Gomez, Gary Neal, and Scotty May played just 7 seasons in the league, Neal was already 26 as a rookie, while Willie signed 3 years with Barcelona, a much better backup center today than a lot of players. Many of these former great rookies from pre-1990s era out the league in a hurry, during a time where the numbers of teams limited, combined with the lack of medical treatment, a severe injury players suffered in their mid-20s could very well have meant career ending. If fully healthy, a few of these players on this list could have easily become Hall of Famers, while more recent guys like Okafor, Pasco, and Al Dorton put up big numbers on bad teams but way too limited, only took a couple years for every team to realize they're just not the right fit for any NBA roster. Thanks so much for watching, for more historical content, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.